I believe in the man in the sky. I believe, with his help, I'll get by. A simple song of simple faith, but true words, indeed. But every time I hear them, I always think of an old story that I heard many years ago. I picture the scene. It's raining, as it has been the last few weeks. It's deluging. And we, we're going to a quaint little village that is just alongside a river. And the rain's pouring down. Now, with the pouring down of the rain, the river begins to overflow. And it begins to flood down into the street of the quaint little village. In the midst of the little village is a house in which lives a God-fearing Christian. The rain is building up and the flood's coming quick. And so they send the fire engines out to rescue those in the street. And it comes to the man, who's the Christian. Get in the fire engine, they say. He said, no, God will save me. Get in the fire. No, God will save me. The fire engine has to carry on because it has things to do. The flood continues. Half an hour later, the flood is now up to the man's bedroom window. And he's in the bedroom window. So they send one of the um, little dinghies with a motor on the back, which you usually see in flood conditions. And down it comes into the street. Get in the boat, they say. Get in the boat. No, no. God will save me, says the man. God will save me. Off goes the boat. Ten minutes later, the flood is now to the roof. The man has clambered onto the roof and he's now holding onto the chimney breast for dear life. Round comes a helicopter and down comes the winch. Get into the boat, they say. Get into the boat. Get into the helicopter. It's not a boat. Get in the helicopter, they say. <laughs> no, God will save me, says the man. Get in the, get in the helicopter. No, says the man. The helicopter has to go, the wind's blowing strong. Away goes the helicopter. The flood comes, sweeps the man away to his death. The man arrives at the pearly gates of heaven, soddened, flops his way into heaven. He's not happy at all, he's soaked. He gets to the throne of God and he says, I believed in you, God, all my life, God, all my life I believed in you. I said, he'll save me. What did you do? You did nothing. And God said, now hold on. Hold on, did nothing, did nothing, said God. I sent you a boat, I sent you a helicopter. Not the best, is it? <laughs> it's true, isn't it? God sent him the boat, God sent him the helicopter. In the same way, the man had complained, hadn't he? He comes to God and complains, you did nothing for me, he said. You did nothing for me, what help did you send for me? But he'd believed in the man in the sky. He'd believed with God, his help, he'd get by. In the same way, friends, have we, throughout our lives, sometimes failed to see when God has offered help to us? Have we failed to see the boat or the helicopter that's been sent to our assistance? And therefore, this morning, I thought... Along these lines, our topic would be the unnoticed hand of God. Seek and you will find. The unnoticed hand of God. Seek and you will find. Our text this morning, which I'd like us to consider, is that well-known piece of text, as we had from our New Testament reading this morning, from Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Our three divisions, ask, seek and knock. So ask and you will be given. Wondrous instructions from the Lord, isn't it? Most simple. But there's an instruction and there's a promise. The instruction is ask. The promise is you will be given. So by means of illustration, let us recount once again our Old Testament reading this morning, which was taken from Exodus 16, 1 to 15, read for us by Yvonne this morning. At verse 2 and 3 of that, we hear the, the Israelites are murmuring. 
They are grumbling. Now let us not forget what happened just in the chapter before. In just the chapter before, chapter 15, Moses is singing a song of praise to God. Miriam, his sister, is dancing with all the ladies in praise and thanks to God because God has just brought them through the Red Sea. They have evaded the capture of Pharaoh and they're singing and dancing and praising God. The next chapter, our chapter today, they're grumbling. They're murmuring straight away. It tells us it's the second month since they've commenced their journey from Egypt and their provisions have run out. They are hungry. So we can understand. They're worried and concerned and they're a bit stressed. And we hear they start to murmur, to grumble, to complain in their strife. It tells us where they send the grumblings and the complaints. They grumble and complain to Moses and Aaron. The two people in human form who had actually led them out. But they're complaining to them. Do we do the same, friends? Let's be honest. We all have reason today, maybe, for a strife or a trial that we're going through. It may be a worry on your mind. Emotionally, you may be heavy laden. It may be physical pain. We're all facing something. If we haven't, we will, because it's life. We know this. And when we grumble and when we complain, who do we complain and grumble to? Invariably, the nearest one to us, isn't it? Our loved ones. Husbands, wives, children. It's the one, those. As the old song, we always hurt the ones we love, the ones we shouldn't hurt at all. We grumble and complain to them. But let me, let, let me get this into perspective. To relieve ourselves and to talk to others is a good thing. What we see here is a sort of blaming by the Israelites. They're blaming Moses. They're blaming Aaron. You're not blaming your loved ones, friends. But we may complain. At verse 9, well, verse 8, Moses says the murmurings, the complaints that you're giving to us, you're not giving them to Moses and Aaron. You're giving them to God. Our complaints are going up to God. But let us not get it wrong. It was God who put them in the situation. It's God who gives us our strife. And why? Why, maybe we would ask. Why has God sent the trial that I face? Well, on this occasion, the Lord tells them, God tells them, at verse 4, he will prove, he seeks to prove whether they will follow him and keep faith with him in what will follow next. There's a purpose behind everything that God does. And there's a purpose here. What we don't see, though, we don't actually see that the Israelites asked. In their trial, they didn't ask God of any help, did they? They just moaned and complained to their loved one. They didn't ask. And here's what the Lord says to us. At times, ask. That's the first thing we need to do. God still answered them. Because even by the murmurings and the complaints, he heard the murmurings and complaints, and he said, I've heard them. In Romans, the letter to the Romans, Paul says, For we know what we should pray for. But the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Friends, you may be facing strife at the moment, and I know some of you are. And it may be that when you say your prayers, you cannot even express it, for such is the stress. You may just say, help, Lord. And he will hear. He hears the groanings. He hears the murmurings. We have to ask, though. We have to ask. Ask, and it will be given, says the Lord. And so it was. God provided. He said, I will provide flesh and I will provide bread. And we told that on the evening, quails were sent. Quails, little birds, the flesh for the people to eat. 
Here was a blatant example of God assisting. Our mistake is often, isn't it, that when we pray we think our prayers will be answered. Ba-boom! An epiphany, an explosion of lightning. And it'll be there. But God doesn't work like a genie. We can't just shine the lamp and our prayers will be answered. Sometimes, sometimes, we have to seek. And here's what the Lord said. Ask and it'll be given. Seek and you will find. At verse 15 of our Old Testament reading, we hear that the next morning a Jew had settled and when it lifted, little pieces of what we now know as manna, food. But the actual word, friends, manna, in Hebrew, is, what is it? So when the people go, manna, well, what is it? They didn't know what this was. They didn't recognise it as food. They go, what is this? So they're seeking, they're asking, in the same way we have to ask, friends. Help from God often comes in unseen manners. It's not always by it will appear as our prayers dictate. I asked this morning, friends, in your times of stress and strife, are you being offered help right now by somebody or something? In your lives at the moment, is help being offered to you? Are you turning it down if it is? Are we turning away the hand of God? For as we see, it comes in unnoticed manners. Jesus is at the wedding at Cana with his mother and brothers. At a wedding, a festivity, and we know the story. It's the first attributed miracle to, go- to Jesus. The wine runs out. He brings the pots of water. Would you expect to get wine out of water? You wouldn't, would you? It comes from an unexpected source. The help came from an unexpected source. You wouldn't go to the shop and buy a bottle of wine, a bottle of water and expect wine to come out of it. But God will answer in unexpected means and manners. Three weeks ago I prayed. Well, I pray every day. (laughs) I prayed and I asked God for some assistance. And last week... I realised that it had happened, that God had answered my prayer by means of a text that had come through. And I hadn't even noticed it. I took no notice. And then it dawned on me. That was the help I asked for. That was the help I asked for. I'd completely missed it. It had come by means of a text. (laughs) There was the answer. That was the assistance I'd sought. But I'd missed it. Like the man on the, on the rooftop. I'd missed the hand of God. I'd seen the boat, the boat had come, the helicopter had come. And I I'd, I'd just dismissed it, thinking it would come in a better way. As we said two weeks ago, friends, instruments of God, we're instruments of God, we play the good notes, we said the last time. Had you realised that by being the instruments of God, You may be the assisting hand to somebody else who hadn't anticipated it. By a friendly smile to a stranger yesterday or today. That person may not have spoke to anybody for weeks. And by your smile, your hello, you may have lifted them. In the same manner, our help will come from outside. It will come from outside of us. And we have to look for it. Because sometimes we'll miss it otherwise. Is help being offered to you? And you're turning it down. We have to open our eyes, friends. Like Saul of Tarsus, Paul. The scales have to fall from our eyes and we have to open our eyes to the help of God around us. If we consider just right at this moment the help that God's given you right now. The food on your table later. The shelter above your head. The ability to see right now, the ability to hear, 
These are all blessings from God. But we sometimes forget, don't we? We just look past them. And what did the Israelites do when they realised, what is this? When they realised it was food from God. Well, they moved to our final instruction from Jesus Christ. Knock and the door will be opened. We have to actively act sometimes. The help will come, but we have to act. And what is the action? We have to accept it. Friends, are you accepting help that's been offered to you? By your family from outdoor means? Are you accepting it? And if you're not, there's a reason why. Pride will step in. And who brings that? Satan himself. No, I don't need any help. <laughs> I don't need any help, you know. I don't, Sue, I don't. I don't need any help. I don't need any help. I'm self-reliant. I don't need that else. No, go away. Go away. But why, does, why do we do that? It's pride. And the devil wants us to do that. Why? Because he doesn't want us to see the glory of God. He doesn't want us to see how God helps us. Because if we accept the help, our prayers are answered. And we offer great thanks to God. The devil doesn't want that. Put the pride up. No, I'm not accepting that. No. Friends, open our eyes. The help we're being offered is invariably from God. It's the boat, it's the helicopter. Let's not shun it away. Moses himself. Chapter 14. Just before, at the edge of the Red Sea, Pharaoh's racing in with the Egyptians. They're standing by the edge of the sea. And Moses begins to cry to God. And in verse 14, God says, what did you cry to me for? It sounds a little harsh, but his next word says, go forward. Go forward. We need to act. When help is being offered, we need to accept it. We need to go forward, friends. What greater acceptance or understanding can we have when we are in times of strife whatever it may be for you today or whatever it may be in the past they hankered for the past the Israelites we could all say look how good it was then but friends we may be saying in the future look how good it is now let's look to God and be thankful for what we have from him let's turn to Christ at these times for he says come unto me all ye who labour are heavy burdened, and I will give thee rest. The Lord's calling us in at times of strife. Come unto me, he says, and I will give you rest. Psalm 55, 20. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he will sustain thee. It's trust in the Lord. It always has been. And it always will be. Not in ourselves, but in the almighty God, whose hand will offer assistance in often unknown methods. Trust in him. I put my trust in the Lord, says the psalmist David. For friends, we do not want to be like the man in the story at the beginning. We do not want to stand that day before the judgment seat, before God, and say, what did you do for me? And then to our embarrassment... If God reels off, well, I did this, I did that, I did the other. Can we stand before God embarrassed and say, you're right, Lord, I didn't see it. Our song before my commencement this morning said, I believe in the man in the sky. I believe with his help I'll get by. My footsteps may falter, my eyes may grow dim, but he is my Gibraltar. I'm trusting in him. Though a sparrow is all I may be, on me he will still keep an eye. So I'll keep singing his praise for the rest of my days because we believe in the man in the sky. Friends, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we will find. Knock and that door will be opened.
And may God bless you. And amen. Leave me, oh Lord, won't you?